Hey everybody, Kane here, and welcome to another video of Art of Conquest. We will continue where we left off about two months or so ago and cover heroes as guides. So, this particular one we have Hopnia, and she herself can actually have three builds that you can do. In terms of equipment, I mean, this is pretty much the only really build that I kind of see her doing and going for aside from that this particular helmet you can just swap with a shield such as this it really depends on you but some heroes that actually have invincibilities i just put a tiny bit of more stats and also she's on the burst side with invincibility usually doesn't tend to die so that is one change that you might want to do Aside from that, uh, I have the attack speed tome. I don't think that there's anything else a lot better at the moment, not that I've noticed. And of course, outgoing control effects will last 20% longer. We're going to talk about this in just a second when we go into the abilities. Now for the Drake set, the only reason why you would want to do it is increases the level of all abilities by one. You kind of require probably about four abilities of her, uh, maybe three or so. It really depends. So for the artifact, I still use this particular one. I'm not entirely sure whether or not this actually uh, helps out in the, the burst side that I'm actually using her. But I mean, it, it's uh, her artifact, perhaps. Aside from that, we have her own prism. Now, quite a lot of people don't tend to either notice this or use this, but this is actually pretty friggin' sweet. Especially if you are using this particular hero on your burst side. What it says is it increases the vulnerability effect, corrosive potion, by 112%. So it goes from, uh, let's see, 8% to over 100%. So basically more than doubles the damage taken, I suppose, from the ability or so. I mean, it really depends how the calculation goes, but it actually might be pretty friggin' sweet. So, first kit is something that I kind of use for events. Now, for events, you want the Onslaught Powder. When attacking smaller troops, deals area damage equal to 8%. When attacking large, massive troops, deals damage equal to 420 blazing percent of own attack damage. So, she can actually buff your archers to do quite a bit more damage with this particular build. Aside from that, we have Corrosive Potion. Movement speed of enemy melee units reduced, their damage taken increased uh, by 12% uh, per second up to 60% for 3 seconds. Or it takes effect on all enemy melee units, that will include heroes because it says melee units. Corrosive March increases damage taken by enemy melee heroes by 6% every second up to 90%. So, she throws uh, this particular potion, and you can also throw, uh, or rather, uh, throw it. I do believe this one, uh, where is it? I, I, I do believe this is the ability itself, and you can actually throw it. So, you also proc some of the stuff from the potions. So, this can also work. So, aside from that, that is pretty much it. What you want for events, I do you believe it's this one Onslaught Powder, Corrosive Potion, and of course, this one, which I do believe will kind of help you spew more of this or so. Or does this only affect the stiffening powder? Personally, to this day, I still don't understand what is this right like it, it, it's worth it in in a way that just doesn't make sense to me i don't know why yeah this one i was using on my stall side when i had her there now do you see i don't really use corrosive potion on the stall side because it's kind of pointless 
but we are using stiffening powder. They're mixing stiffening powder in the storage tank. Uh, the magic powder grants friendly melee units within range shield equal to 25% of own max HP for 5 seconds. And uh, a chance to reduce attackers' attack speed shield uh, and a chance of reducing attack speed can stack 4 times. So I do believe this, um, along with I do believe the alloy potion bag, as well as the alchemy's beetle, and I do believe the artifact can all uh, go together and they buff each other. Uh, too many percentages to go over and talk about it, but I do believe they kind of connect together. So that is why people would use her on their own stall sites. However, this does not tend to have very huge range as far as I've noticed. So the majority of the time, she's actually very close to the front line and very, very close to being killed. And it's kind of easy because we have heroes right now, like, for example, Avril, who has friggin' 500 million attack just by upgrading a couple of features. And uh, heroes like this, even a 69 one, will just be blasted to nothingness in a couple of abilities and even if i make it like level 74 you can actually kill her pretty easily so personally i no longer find the stall side one or stall side kit being any good but perhaps in the future it might come back this at some points made my stall side incredibly tanky because this was proking quite a bit you could overstack it, you could uh, reduce a ton of attack speed, enemy wasn't able to clear it. Everything changed with Lee, everything changed with literature, with uh, other stones, all that kind of stuff. So that is the second build. Now the third one which I am using is this particular one. So personally... Uh, I kind of level these two things just for the, the hell of it, but I would just level this particular one if I had enough ability points. So aside from that, uh, currently I am using Morphing Potion as high level as possible, and I'm using the Corrosive Potion, as well as I have the Alloy Bag maxed, or um, increasing the corrosive potions effect and higher in vulnerability in terms of uh, if she falls below a specific percent. Meaning the array will not die or not as likely. She has chances to cast another potion after a period of time and stuff like that. So for me, these three particular abilities are kind of better, especially when you have this pairing up with this and then of course pairing up with this as well she kind of has a huge huge damage taken increase and quite often the corrosive potion lands on balrogs if not all the time and then of course you cast your own potion usually on balrog as well wherever he is and then, of course, uh, other effects take into consideration, like even this one kind of increases in stuff like that. But aside from that, you also might be able to throw a bottle in the back line, which has a chance to stun. Now, the thing about that, some people tend to have the randomest builds ever. Some people, uh, as, as I've seen, even had Lee uh, install sides. And at some point, nearly one shot my dragon as well, which was kind of funny. But they didn't, but it was closed. But, I mean, in this kind of case, like, I don't use archers. I cannot really use any of these abilities well. So in some cases, she kind of stuns some of the buffers. They tend to take more damage. And all of those kinds of things. Or not proc an ability. Maybe somebody would want to proc. And eventually, I mean, I, I would kind of win out. Because I have to take into consideration, she doesn't always throw it to the back line. She sometimes throws it to the front line. So if 
enemy is pincering, she still has a chance to even CC the frontline um, heroes as well. So that is another thing why I kind of chose it. It's just more useful than the other ones for me personally. And all the others are pretty much self-explanatory. Now, in terms of potential, I do believe that you still require about 50 potential to make this particular hero work. One of the abilities that is pretty good is the Corrosive Potion. So it turns from, say, 10% and maximum 50. Yeah, so max 50% on heroes, uh, as well as like army, it changes to 12% uh, and 60. So it basically just improves a little bit of that and, and increases the maximum. But the Corrosive Marsh increases damage taken by enemy melee heroes by almost double the amount. And of course, magic increases the damage taken and all that kind of stuff. We have, what, 300 magic? It's more than enough. But yeah, I do believe 50 potential is required. And as you can see, the potential 35 is kind of wasted because we have two abilities that we're not using. One is for the archers. One is usually for the front line. So, for example, uh, Power Grant's friendly melee units, which equals heroes as well. When the shield is in effect, yeah, she doesn't really reach melee heroes, not even close. So, regardless of that, both of these abilities are kind of wasted in the current build, or I would say the current best build for Hopnia. Aside from that... Potential 70, this, uh, this is actually pretty sweet in Potential 70 because she throws more of these potions and because she throws more of these potions, you can stack the vulnerability effect higher and more. And uh, yeah, it's pretty much just for the Morphing Potion and Corrosive Potion. Yeah, shortened to 12 seconds. So... This one is pretty good and likely could increase some of your damage output. Now, this particular one, is, she kind of spits in a larger area. So this could be with the um, tanky build where you would place her in the stall side. But that build is not good at the moment because this hero is one of the more important ones and you want it to survive and you want it to increase your damage. But... Yeah, that is the, the build on Hopnia that I'm using. Perhaps in the future, perhaps uh, maybe close future, I will make her potential 70 and see how it goes. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Personally, I use it in my burst side, the current formation that I do have. I will show you in just a second. So in this particular formation, I use her in my burst side right now. So we have uh, a lot of, uh, I guess, utility, a lot of buffs, a lot of debuffs. And she, well, she throws the potion somewhere here, usually Balrog's in the top right corner. And of course, she throws the potion straight at Balrog. So pretty much uh, a good placement for her. The corner is reserved for more DPS or huge, better debuffs that cannot be specifically targeted but yeah pretty much it hopefully you found it useful if you did do hit that subscribe button it would help me out a lot so as if you would wish to support me more than just watching my videos i have made a patreon page where you would be able to do just that in return i would be able to help you out more individually in terms of events pvp formations and stuff like that but as i would like to thank all of my patrons for the support I really, really appreciate it for your subscriptions. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for watching. Take care and stay safe out there.